Magandang araw po sa ating lahat. Ito po si Cesar D. Ordonez. And in today's video, pag-uusapan po natin ng value-added tax o madalas po nating tinatawag na VAT. Ito po yung madalas concern ng mga VAT registered entity dahil ito po yung kinocomply nila on a monthly and quarterly basis. So now, to start with, let us define what is value-added tax. Value-added tax is a form of sales tax. It is a tax on consumption levied on the sale, barter, exchange or lease of goods or properties and services in the Philippines and on importation of goods into the Philippines. It is an indirect tax which may be shifted or passed on to the buyer, transferee or lessee of goods, properties or services. Based on the definition, value added tax is a form of sales tax. So nanggagaling po yan primarily sa ating mga sales transaction. It is also an indirect tax dahil pwede po natin ipasa sa atin pong mga customers and clients ang pagbabayad nito. But the next question is, am I required to file and pay value added tax? Yan po yung isa nating kailangang sagutin ngayon. Ano? Sino-sino yung mga required na mag-file at magbayad ng value added tax? First, any person or entity who in the course of his trade or business sells, barters, exchanges, leases goods or properties and render services subject to VAT if the aggregate amount of actual gross sales or receipts exceed 3 million pesos. Second, a person required to register as VAT taxpayer but failed to register. And third, any person whether or not made in the course of his trade or business who imports goods. So the biggest question really if you're running a business right now is yung bang aking negosyo magje-generate ng more than 3 million na gross sales or gross receipts sa isang taxable year. Because if the answer is yes, then you are now required to file and pay value-added tax. Yung 3 million pesos po na threshold, hindi naman po yan constant. Pwede po yan magbago. Kasi dati, yung threshold po is 1 million 500. Then, nung binago po yan, naging 1,919,500. And now, after the effectivity of the train law, naging 3 million po siya. Kaya hindi po yan constant, pwede pong magbago, depende po sa pangangailangan ng panahon. At ang atin pong mga mga mabatas ang magtatakda niyan. Meron din pong mga negosyo na nire-require ng batas na magparehistro na as VAT registered entities. At babalik pa rin po tayo dun sa ating threshold na 3 million pesos. So sino-sino po ba yung mga required magparehistro as VAT registered entity? Sila po yung based on our estimate e eh pwedeng lumagpas sa 3 million yung kanilang gross sales at gross receipt sa isang taxable year. Halimbawa, kung kalahatian pa lamang po ng taon meron na po kayong 1.5 million na sales e eh magparehistro na po kayo dahil posible po kayong lumagpas sa atin pong threshold na 3 million. Dahil kung hindi pa po kayo makakapagparehistro at lumagpas kayo sa ating threshold, may karampatang consequence po yan. Ngayong alam na po natin kung sino-sino yung mga required magbayad ng value-added tax, the next question is, magkano naman yung ating babayaran na value-added tax? O kaya kung ano yung mga rates na available for value-added tax? On sale of goods and properties, 12% of the gross selling price or gross value in money of goods or property sold, barter or exchanged. On sale of services and use or lease of properties, 12% of gross receipts derived from the sale or exchange of services, including the use or lease of properties. On importation of goods, 12% based on the total value used by the Bureau of Customs in determining tariff and customs duties, plus customs duties, excise taxes if any, and other charges such as tax to be paid by the importer prior to the release of such goods from customs custody, provided that where the customs duties are determined on the basis of quantity or volume of the goods, the VAT shall be based on the landed cost plus excise taxes if any. And last, on export sales and other zero-rated sales, 0%. So meron po tayong dalawang rates pagdating sa value-added tax. We have 12% and 0%. But the question is, ito na po ba yung kailangan nating i-remit sa BIR? The answer is no. 
we have to take into consideration the output tax and input tax because the VAT payable is the excess of your output tax over your input tax. So what is output tax and input tax? Output tax means the VAT due on the sale, lease or exchange of taxable goods or properties or services by any person registered or required to register under Section 2316 of the Tax Code. Input tax means the VAT due on or paid by a VAT registered on importation of goods or local purchase of goods, properties, or services, including lease or use of property in the course of his trade or business. It shall also include the transitional input tax determined in accordance with Section 111 of the Tax Code, presumptive input tax, and deferred input tax from previous period. Para mas mabilis po nating maunawaan, Ang output VAT po ay yung VAT na ipinasa po natin sa ating mga customers. Yung input VAT naman po, yun po yung ipinasa ng ating mga suppliers sa atin. Normally po, mas mataas talaga yung ipinapasa nating uh, output VAT sa ating mga customers kesa yung binabayaran po nating VAT na ipinasa sa ating mga suppliers. Kaya nagkakaroon po tayo ng value added tax payable kaya naman po ganyan yan kasi normally sa isa pong negosyo meron po tayong margin ibig pong sabihin yung atin pong mga pinamili pinapatungan po natin yan ng ating profit kaya normally mas mataas po talaga yung output VAT kaysa sa input VAT pero may mga cases din naman po talaga pero bihirang mangyari na mas mataas ang input VAT kaysa sa output VAT so kung magkagano naman po, yung excess naman po niyan, pwede nyo pong gamitin sa mga susunod na inyo pong filing. So ibig sabihin, kung nag-exceed ka ngayon, pwede mo po yung ibawas sa susunod na buwan or sa susunod na quarter kung applicable. And finally, once na-compute nyo na po ang inyo pong VAT payable, it is now time for you to file and pay your VAT payable. So ano po yung ginagamit nating form at ano po yung deadline? For monthly VAT declarations, ginagamit po natin ang BIR form 2550M. M stands for monthly, which will fall due not later than the 20th day following the end of each month if you are under manual filing. That is for manual filers. Now, if you are under EFPS or yung tinatawag po nating electronic filing and payment system, you may refer to www.bir.gov.ph dahil meron po silang schedule depende po sa inyo pong category. For quarterly value added tax return, ginagamit naman po natin ang BIR form 2550Q. Q stands for quarterly, which will fall you within 25 days following the close of the taxable quarter. Ngayong mayroon na po kayong basic knowledge sa value added tax, I hope makakomply na po kayo properly sa atin pong mga requirements because if you don't, mapepenalty po kayo. Now, if you feel that you need a professional service, you may consult your accountants or leave your comment below and let me help you with your concerns. So that's all for now. Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyo pong pakikinig. Sana po ang aking pong video ay nakatulong sa inyo at kung sa tingin nyo po uh, makakatulong din po ito sa iba, please share this video to them. And before I end, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell para po lagi kayong updated sa aking mga videos. Muli, ito po si Cesar Ordonez. Maraming maraming salamat po at mabuhay po kayo.